Hey, what's going on, guys? Kalamazi here. We are hopefully less than, I would guess, a few weeks away from probably War Within uh, Alpha and a month and a half or so from Season 4. But today, I want to talk to you all a little bit about destruction versus demonology on retail in Mythic Plus and talk about why I think demonology overall is closer to Destro, if not maybe still a bit better than Destro in Mythic Plus retail in average key settings. There's been a lot of Destro in the MDI, in Mythic Plus, making these massive pulls and it's doing insane numbers, but I wanna talk about why it does them and why it's not necessarily as applicable in retail and pugs and settings like that. Now, I'm not saying Destro's bad, it's still good and very good in certain settings, and Demo's still very good as well. So today we'll talk about that in Mythic Plus and go from there. Uh, like always, any weak or add-ons, if you like them, links to Twitch and Discord down below, I'll we'll brief you guys. Uh, and also, just heads up uh if you guys have noticed at all i've been streaming on youtube for the past uh few streams or whatever i should be live both on youtube and twitch for the probably the remainder of my streaming career so if you guys uh, are youtube only i've been streaming on here if you uh, haven't come by the channel on twitch or want to in general or whatever well links to that down below so enough with all the uh, spam and everything let's uh let's get into the video so i think the best way to highlight demo versus destro and plus is to start off by just going over the build you play in plus now some talents may change in certain spots, depending if you like certain things or not or whatever. But for the most part, like the higher end builds are typically locked in for Demo and Destro. Uh, and you go from there. Now, Demonology has been known for a very, very long time, having a, you know, a solid single target like profile, but mostly having that solid stacked cleave AOE profile. A lot of the spec just baseline uh, through abilities brings a solid AOE profile. It's basically passive. You cast your called Dreadstalkers, for example, it's passive cleave. Demonic Strength or Bombers, Passive Cleave. Your Pet with Fellstorm, Passive Cleave. Uh, passive Cleave, I'm sorry. Uh, Hand of Gul'dan, Splash Damage, Passive Cleave. You have Implosion, which is not, you know, there's cycling of Implosion, but you can have this ability that implodes your Imps from your Hand of Gul'dan, which cleaves passively every two or three hand casts roughly, right? Now, on top of that, you have Soul Strike, which can cleave through Ventoral Armaments, and also you have the location building upon that. You have Bioscorch Bombers that also has your Hand of Gul'dan cleave, or it's essentially cast a bomber whenever you cast Hand of Gul'dan. It has a higher proc rate, the higher the more mobs you have. It has a very strong, just passive cleave profile, and we'll look at it in a minute or so here in combat as well. But the abilities you cast to generate shards and resources and pets and single target are also applicable in AoE. Your Hand of Gul'dan summons imps in single target. Your Demonic Strength, which is one of your cooldown right here, is cast in single target. Your Grimoire Felguard is cast in single target. Fell Sunder is played in single target, certain single target builds, right? You can even change other abilities, you know, uh, Immutable Hatred to Guillotine for even more AoE. More Cleave if you want Mythic Plus or AoE settings. You have abilities like Pack of the Imp Mother, which can spawn double the imps from your Hand of Gul'dan's, which fuels larger implosions. You have things like Dread Calling, which can give you instant, instant cast called Dread Stalkers. Or things like Hound Master Stratagem, which apply an AoE Shadow Flame debuff to all targets hit by your dogs, which are cast every 20 seconds, which makes your implosion other abilities hit harder. And on top of all that, you have Carnivorous Stalkers, which has your dogs, or I guess gives them a chance to cast Dreadbite again, which reapplies Hound Master Stratagem. So it's basically one huge loop of synergy in a sense. It just works well together, right? And there are other abilities like Imp Gang Boss, which isn't really played much anymore, but can lead to larger cleave if need be. Now you have this odd damage profile of having your Tyrant basically every two minutes because it's worth holding your Tyrant for your Grimoire Thugard, for extensions and all that. But even with that being the case, it still brings a relatively strong single target profile, but also that really good stat cleave profile. And you have the ability to also ramp in a sense, or I guess ramp from one pack heading to the next by building imps at the end and just going, hey, next pack, cast dogs, cast grimoire, cast tyrant. You have all these resources pooled, pumping insane damage into the next pack. And that can happen every two minutes. And even if you don't have your tyrant or your grimoire, you still have demonic strength Every half minute, you have Fell Invocation, or sorry, Shadow Invocation, being triggered by Hand of Gul'dan Cast. You have Dogs every 20 seconds. You can Implosion Cycle basically every two or three Hand of Gul'dan Cast, depending on procs. And if you're playing Guillotine, you have that basically every 45. On top of the fact that your pet just fell storms once every half a minute, right? So a very, very strong, consistent stat cleave profile, right? Consistent is the word I want to use here. Now, when it comes to Destro, there are some consistencies, right? But uh, Demo has that snap on demand profile. If you're carrying 15 imps from one pack to the next, you can go into that pack, cast dogs, your Dreadstalkers, just which applies stratagem, right? And just go implosion, demonic strength, and fling a very large amount of burst damage through implosion, strength, dog uh, chomping, whatever, into that pack, right? Very strong burst profile, sort of similar to how Af can cast a bunch of seeds off the bat and get that big burst damage, you know, 
at the start of a pull. Destruction, on the other hand, has also a very strong AOE profile and actually stronger, arguably stronger single target uh, than what Demo has, but it has some issues at the same time. Now, previously, Destro's played a build that is focused on playing Inferno, and you've played, uh, depending on your tier bonus, no CDF, you play things like Scalding Flames with Inferno for this massive AOE profile. And that build looked more like this, give or take a couple talents last season, where you had your two-minute Infernal, your Crashing Chaos, Grand Warlock's Design, Old Madness, and your, you know, Purple Infernals for stuns and all that stuff, right? Uh, now, this season... Thanks to our tier bonus, which is actually catapult the Destro to being one of the better specs and plus, uh, giving us dimensional rifts. Dimensional rifts cannot, they cleave basically, um, it is periodic damage, uh, and it's, whenever your emulates tick, they can grant you a charge of dimensional rift. Your rifts cleave, and your rifts actually give a good bit of funnel damage on the target you pop them on, while also cleaving onto other targets around them, right? So feeding into that, you know, AOE profile. But Destro has shifted a bit this season, as we know, to playing Cataclysm, most builds have, to Cataclysm, and a good bit of them are playing uh, Channel Demon Fire with Raging Demon Fire to extend the emulates you apply with Cataclysm. By playing CDF and RDF and Cata, applying the emulates, no longer playing Inferno, you can have permanent emulates on up to eight targets, I guess all targets, uh, isn't it all targets? Yeah, sure, there you go. Uh, I'm thinking of square roots and all that stuff. Um, from Cataclysm, right? There's no, there's no, you know, casting seven or eight, or realistically, realistically casting, you know, three, four emulates when you're pulling a pack, then having them fall and recasting them. You can go in, cast Cata, have it apply to all the mobs hit by your Cata, whatever the square root is or whatever, uh, and then have CDF and RDF extend them all for that guaranteed consistent chance of getting Rift refunds, which you're playing this season. Now, with all that being taken into account, you still have a very strong AB profile, right? You still have... Infernal with Crashing Chaos empowering your next eight Chaos Bolts or Random Fires. But unlike last season, this season is a three minute cooldown. You're not playing Grand Warlock's Design. And that is because of the fact that you're, I mean, forced into playing Dimensional Rift here because of your tier bonus, which is a capstone, right? You can't get all three capstones. As far as Ritual of Ruin, Avatar Destruction go, it's very solid. Having that, you know, Blast Me come down, the stun's very relevant. The extra or the free Random Fire Bolt cast it gives is also very relevant. And honestly, this build brings pretty strong single target. It can still bring very strong AOE, but unlike Demo that has that on-demand snap AOE at times, or even a faster, more consistent profile by casting dogs every 20, implosion every two or three hands, fell storm, demonic strength, uh, stratagem cleave, all of that cleave, right? Destro still ramps a bit, or oh, a decent bit. You can cast Cataclysm into Channel Demon Fire, into Rain of Fire, all that on pull, but it still takes a bit of time to get churning with those rifts with those rifts being cast, with the with the random fires being thrown down, right? And that's where Destro strength lies, right? Because you can get, once that gets going, once you get rolling and you're pulling multiple packs, two, three, four packs on top of each other, Destro can churn out even more random fires. You have more emulates rolling. You have more rifts coming in. More emulates on more targets means more rift refunds from your tier bonus. And that's where Destro really takes off, right? Um, I have a, a chart here as well of current target caps for Shadowlands. I think this is the same for, um, Retail now. I don't believe they changed much for Warlock or anything. Uh, Shadow Fury, uncapped, whatever. Hell of Terror, Dark at 5. Uh, Aff, as we can see here, uh, it's uncapped for Rapture, but you're not really casting, you know, Rapture and AOE a whole lot, let alone like, you know, bolt, like 10 targets that are right. You're casting Seed. Seed is soft cap at 20. Singularity and Vital Taint, also the same. Um, however, Vital Taint is capped at 8 for Agony Applications, but whatever. This is Demo and Destro, right? So Demonology, soft cap at 20 on Handy Gul'dan. Splash damage, whatever. Implosion is square root. Square root head, however you want to word it, but you're not always casting implosion constantly in AoE. It's every few hand Gul'dan cast, but it's powerful when you can. Thalstorm, being demonic strength and Thalstorm, both capped at eight targets, and then bombers and dreadlash capped at 20. But you're not casting his abilities or have the uh, I guess option to cast them essentially over and over and over, like random fire spam, right? Hand the Gul'dan requires shards. Implosion requires imps. Thalstorm is a cooldown, being half minute or a minute. I think it's half minute for Thalstorm. Bombers, cooldown, Dreadlash from your dogs, also a cooldown. Destruction, Havoc, two targets, obviously. Infernal cap, it is what it is. Rain of Fire is capped at 20, which, I mean, that, depending on how large the pull actually is, obviously, like, 20 mobs is pretty big, but it's soft capped at 20, right? When you're able to spam those Rain of Fires over and over and over, that's where your huge, just ramping damage comes from. When you have those Cataclysms rolling permanently, thanks to Channel Demon Fire and uh, Raging Demon Fire, 
permanently giving those shard generation uh, ticks, most immolates, six, seven, eight, however many you have out, churning out more fires through a Havoc window, casting conflict rates to fuel fire at the same time. That's where Destro Strength lies, when you're able to stay in combat for a while with these larger poles, higher key settings, more coordinated settings. Let's say you know the route ahead of time where you can say, all right, I'm going to have Infernal for this pack, this pull here every time. We're going to have Infernal for this pack being pulled onto this boss every time. And I can funnel into the boss with rifts and things like that as well, which also cleave on the mobs or bring a good funnel into your main prior target and still AOE churn everything down or even cast Chaos Bolts on two prior mobs, right? A good example is like Dawn of the Infinite, I think Fall, right? With the Dragon Packs, right? You can spam right of Fire there, but realistically, most of the time, uh, quite often, your value lies in casting rifts on those larger dragons and chaos bolt and cleaving them down via havoc for that large funnel damage. But still, all those caddis churning, all the, the CDF cast extending the emulates or all the emulates rolling, whatever, still fuels more rift refunds, which feeds more rift cast, which feeds more funnel damage, as well as more shards, because rift also gives you a shard, which fuels more random fires. So it's similar to how almost last season was, like when you had two minute infernal or old Grand Warlock's design, when it was, you know, just baseline, hey, a CDR on it and not a cap of, you know, a two minute infernal. In those mass AOE settings, you can get a minute infernal, even sub minute infernal, when you're casting a million random fires. It's not the same way, but it's a different cycle of permanent emulates, which means more shard gen, and they tick, which means more random fire casts. Permanent emulates means more rift cast, means more funnel damage, which means more shards coming in from more rift cast. CDF extending them all. It's similar but different to last season, but it's still good in the same setting. So with that being said, let's look at them both in combat. You can see the difference here a bit from Destro and Demo. Now, when you're looking at Demonology, uh, Mythic Plus, it's sort of hard to replicate on dummies here because Demo typically will carry like resources, uh, demonic cores, imps, uh, shards from one pack to the next. I can't really do it here, but I can show what an opener would look like and talk about what you would see typically in plus settings if you're coordinating for larger pulls or heading into the next pack, what you should be looking to do, right? So let's say we're heading into a pack here. Uh, I'm waiting for my imp to spawn. It's going to expire here. I'll have power siphon. So I'll have two cores ready to go, right? So one spawns, cool. We have two. So like, let's say I have two cores heading into the next pack, ready to go. Uh, let's say I'm at like five shards, whatever. I'm building five. Um, like, if I'm five full CDing, nothing. I'm going to cast my Grim War here. I'm going to cast Dogs. I'm going to cast Bolt. I'm going to change a different target here. Hand the Ghoul Dam, Bolt. And probably just Hand the Ghoul Dam again. Tyrant. Like, I'll Spindle, whatever, like, trinket you have. And just go Demonic Strength. Now, you can implode here if you really want to or need to. But you also have these Imps being set, extended from your Tyrant extension, right? So, I'll cycle through here. I'll Siphon if I have it up. So, we can apply more Doom Brands. I'll brand there. Hand, Doom Brand here. It can load now because they're expiring. You can cast Dogs beforehand if it lines up. And the big thing here is micromanaging Doom Brands. Don't cast you two shard hands. Uh, micromanaging Doom Brands on multiple targets, making sure you're fresh at the right time. And implosion cycling. Like right here, 14 imps. I'll implode again because they're about to expire, right? Cast this over fresh Doom Brand. Now, if you're heading from one pack to the next Mythic Plus, for example, right? Like, let's say this pack's going to die here. In a second or two, right? I might hold this dog proc heading into the next pack. So I can just go 15 imps, dogs, implode. And that is like a good example of where Demo's like snap burst can be if you're looking to do that in Mythic Plus compared to Destro. We'll look at Destro in a minute here, but Destro's more based around, you know, heading in, casting Kata, casting a CDF, casting a Ray of Fire or two, putting your Infernal down if you have it. Infernal being a three minute cooldown versus, you know, Demo being two with Tyrant, but also having Demonic Strength every minute, having Dogs every 20, having Implosion every hand or two, or every cycle or two of Hand of Gul'dan, right? Having your Felguard, passively having Felstorm, applying Fel Sunder, basically every Felstorm, right? Um, being a half minute cooldown, just like right now. So Demo has a, a much more, I would say, consistent, like smaller cooldown base profile, but having that consistent stack cleave profile, which is what you encounter quite often in Mythic Plus, is what makes demonology strong now in plus. I mean, you also have Doom Brand being your tier bonus, which is very strong as well. Uh, being able to like weave Doom Brands properly, having them pop multiple targets. I mean, for example, here I'm still in combat, it'll be a little, be a little deflated, but I have 11% of my, my damage here being Doom Brand. Typically a little lower in plus, but I mean, we're on dummies here, all that. Uh, and Doom Bolt Wally with my Doom Fiend being 3%. I see around 15 to 16% in plus, usually between Doom Brand and Doom Bolt Wally. But Demo's profile is very well rounded. It's consistent. Your dogs every 20, Bellstorm every half a minute, Strength every minute, Doom Brand consistently alternating on targets, right? Your Felgar passively cleaving, imploding, hand gold damage, splash damage. You can see how Demo has 
no, it's not as high of a high end as Destro if you're pulling a million mobs together, but it's much more consistent from pack to pack, having these shorter cooldowns, being able to implosion cycle more often, and all of that. So now, let's take a look at Destro and compare the two. So like we talked about, one of the big differences you'll see here, comparing to the demo gameplay a minute ago, is that Destro has, depending what you're doing, if you're, if you're heading from one pack to the next, unlike Demonology that can carry imps over and implode and cast dogs quickly and get that huge burst AP profile going if you want really fast, Destro takes a bit longer to set up, but you can churn out a lot of sustained AOE, funnel damage and all that based on the CDF, RDF, Kata gameplay and all of that. Now, I'm in an Infernal here in full CD. I'm not going to cast my Boloros or whatever, but uh, keep in mind you have Infernal once every three minutes, comparatively to once every two, playing Demo with your Tyrant and things like that, right? So I'm going to head into a pack. Depending on what's going on, uh, I might cast an emulator or two early if they're rounding the pack up to get some flashpoint stacks rolling. But either way, uh, the opener is typically pretty similar from pole to pole. So I'm going to head in, uh, cast my Cataclysm right here. I'm going to cast my Infernal, throw a rain down fast, pop my trinket, I'll open a rift, and just go CDF really faster. Send the emulates, whatever. Put up my Havoc, cast a rain of fire, conflagrate a bit, open a rift, open a rift, and start casting more rain of fires here. Conflagrate. You can see the emulate ticks coming in. In second tier, there they are. More shards. Cast the random fire again here. Conflict rate. Uh, cast CDF. Extend emulates again. There we go. Rain of fire. Rain of fire. Rain of fire. And this is where the big value comes in. You've got emulates rolling. Permanent extensions. You can spam rain of fire a good bit. It's falling. Our emulates are falling. But look, cat it right now. Fully reapply. Rain of fire. There's havoc. I'll cast my free rain of fire. Conflict rate. CDF or extension. Conflict rate again, cast rain of fire. And if you want more funnel damage here, you can just start. Well, I should have cast Havoc, apparently. I fat fingered it, but either way. If you want more funnel damage here, instead of spamming rain of fires, you can just cast Chaos Bolt on two mobs here. And look at these Rift Refunds, too. There's literally two to three right there, back to back to back. More shards, more funnel damage, all that in these heavy sustained AB settings. Look, there's four Rift Refunds literally in a matter of half a minute, right? Five refunds right there. Look, we can Kata again, cast more rain of fires again. One incinerate here, drain of fire, rain of fire. We have Havoc in two, we have CDF right now. Let's cast it, go into our Havoc again, it's conflict rate. Keep throwing rains out, right? My emulates never fall. And it's not even close like it is with AF at times, or I guess how, I guess how AF used to be with Vital Tank Windows being 20 seconds instead of 30. They never fall, as long as you're casting CDF. Another Rift Refund right there, right? So you can see how it brings this insane funnel damage on top of just having this strong AOE profile or if you need, like, Havoc Chaos Bolt Funnel, just Chaos Bolt things down, right? Instead of casting multiple random fires. And look at the breakdown here. Obviously, a lot of random fire damage. Look at look at our rifts here. 5%, 5%, 3%, 3%. So you're looking about 17%, give or take, 16, 16 17 here. And honestly, our refunds weren't even that good, right? But if you're funneling all these rifts into one mob or two mobs, your prior targets, right? It brings that really strong damage profile. And this is only five targets. Picture this when you have multiple emulates rolling, eight, nine, 10 emulates rolling, and you're extending them all with CDF. This is five emulates. And you can also get multiple rift refunds off of, a, how do I word this? So when you cast Cataclysm, all the emulates apply at the same time. They're all apply at the exact same time, right? I've had literally off of each individual emulate tick happening at the same time, I've gone from zero rifts to three rifts off of just, you know, one universal tick, right? So it's important to watch your rifts. It's important to watch your shard gen and all that, but this is what makes Destro so strong in those huge mass AV pull settings in the MDI and things like that, right? When you're pulling 20-ish mobs onto a boss or whatever, pop your Infernal, blast a million random fires, plenty of emulates rolling, uh, CDF to extend them all, rifts flying like crazy. This is what gives Destro that really, really strong mass AB profile and plus when you're making those huge pulls. But you don't always encounter that in groups in LFG and level 19, 20 settings. You typically only see it for the most part in higher, more coordinated settings. You can play Destro in lower keys, or I guess, you know, 20-ish keys, whatever you consider, you know, wherever you're you know, rolling uh, group-wise. But it's full potential in, in high-end, you know, like min-maxing settings is much higher than Demo but you don't encounter those settings anywhere near as often as you do. Uh, settings where demo will be the same, if not better, in those 20-ish pug key ranges where you're just sort of yoloing from pole to pole. So thanks for watching, guys. That wraps it up. Hopefully, if you guys were curious about like, the state of Destro or demo uh, on retail and why I think demo is still pretty good in plus and why I play it a lot in plus and pugs, 
comparatively to Destro, all that, or just any questions in general about this subject. Hopefully, I answered it for you guys. Uh, I'm not saying that, that Destro is bad. Destro is still very good. It, it, it has a, like I said, it has a higher high end than Demo by a lot. You make those massive pulls in Mythic Plus in a more coordinated setting and higher keys. Uh, where well, you know what poles you're making, all that kind of stuff. It's uncapped AOE, essentially. And your your tier bonus feeds in the funnel damage. Huge AOE. It's very good. It's one of the best specs in those uncapped AOE pole settings, right? But in Pugs, like I said, when you're making these one-pack, maybe two-pack poles without, you know, a route being planned out, without any coordination in Discord or any kind of, like, voice comms, it's still solid. It's fine, but it's not as good as Demo, I don't think, in these, like, you know, 20 to 21-ish average key Pug semi-uncoordinated settings. Now, you can play both. Like I said, both are good. But uh, yeah, wanted to highlight the strengths, weaknesses, and just, I guess, like a general bit of, you know, how it might look next season. Like always, any weak or rest add-ons, you want them. Uh, links to Twitch and Discord down below are for free for you guys. Before I end the video, like always, want to give a huge shout out to my patrons. For all support on Patreon, guys, thank you a million times. Uh, I really appreciate it. If you're looking at supporting on Patreon, there should be a link up here, as well as down below in the video description. Uh, also, a brief heads up, uh, like I mentioned at the start of the video, I would guess War Within Alpha is happening probably within the next month or so, hopefully before then. Uh, I am moving. It's been about a year in this apartment. I'd, I'd love to stay here, but unfortunately, uh, Florida and rent prices and everything else don't really work out. So <laughs> uh, I am moving. Uh, I don't know when exactly, but somewhere in April, but uh, I'll keep going in the loop. Might be a bit of a, a bit of a, I don't know, few days I'm not really on stream or making videos here, but nonetheless, I'll do my best. And uh, yeah, we will go from there. So if I'm, not here, if I'm not here for a few days on stream or, you know, if alpha drops, I'm absent for a day or two, you guys will know why. But regardless, thank you all for watching. I'll keep you on the loop, and I'll catch you all again soon on stream, both on Twitch and here on YouTube. Peace.